Hey, welcome to the first of week two post spring break uh, mini lectures. The uh, these lectures, what we're going to be doing this week is we will have a series of three short lectures regarding the classification of economic activity. Then there'll be another lecture uh, on economic systems uh, that will also include formal and informal aspects of the economy. And then finally, a very short lecture on the spatial patterns of labor. So that's where we're going to go. Uh, and again, please make sure that after you've uh, watched these videos that you go and take the practice quizzes. So let's begin with classification of economic activity. So what this really means is that we're going to look at parts of the economy, things that people do. And when we think about this, all economies are dramatically interrelated. So to pull these out in pieces is a little bit artificial, but we want to understand why and where. So. The main things we're going to talk about, again, we're going to talk about primary sector, secondary sector, and then we're going to talk about tertiary sector, and we really often include within the tertiary sector the quaternary and quinary sectors. So we're going to start with primary sector, but when we do this, what I want you to think about as I go through this is the idea of what activities are part of this sector. So in other words, we're looking at something, what are the things that are done in that sector? Then I want you to look at where those sectors are dominant and, in a sense, why. Why are they dominant in those areas and not in others? Then we're going to ask how important they are to a given region or country. In other words, how do they fit into its economy? Is it an important sector or a relatively unimportant sector? And then we're going to look at how that's changed over space and time. So those are the questions to ask. What activities are part of it? Where? And then why there? Okay, that's the important questions. So let's get started on primary activities. So when we talk about primary sector, what we're really talking about is anything that essentially takes um, or extracts. And even agriculture, we can think about that. In a sense, we plant things and then we harvest them. So the primary sector is the harvesting or gathering, extracting of things. And we also want to think about this in terms of value, value added. This is the raw material sector. Okay, this is the raw material sector that we think about. In other words, a cow, as opposed to eating a prime rib at a restaurant. So we're talking about the raw material here. All right, so if we think about this, when we look at globally, <clears throat> what this map shows is the global distribution of cropland. That is land that's used to grow things. And what you can see is that this is actually quite uneven. Most of the world's agricultural production is centered in Western, Central, and Eastern Europe, Western, um, the kind of the central, uh, the Midwest of the United States, and then in East Asia and in South Asia. Now, it's important to distinguish, though, where cropland is used largely for commercial agriculture. And so in North America, most of our agricultural land is for commercial production, that is, producing cereal grains for either animal feed or for uh, agro-industrial uses. Whereas in contrast, when we look at places in Sub-Saharan Africa, East Africa, um, and much, in fact, of India and South Asia, it's more subsistence production. And subsistence means that you're growing something to eat yourself. Now, if we contrast cropland to pasture land, what you'll notice is there's a slight shift in it, and in fact, pasture land is significantly more extensive. The reason in part for that is that pasture land is much more less um, intensive. In other words, when we grow crops, we are using that land heavily. Uh, we grow all of the land is used. When we think about pasture, that means that animals are moving over that land periodically. And so pasture land tends to be a little more arid, uh, significantly less populated, and it is also, though, part can be both commercial and it can be subsistence. Okay, so again, the idea of subsistence means doing it for yourself, growing crops or animals for yourself, uh, and then we say commercial, that is, growing them for market. All right, so why is agriculture where it is? In fact, why all primary activities are where they are is simply because that's where the resource is. If we look at the landscape of the world in terms of suitability for agriculture, we see that in fact where the climate, that is precipitation and temperature are appropriate, 
that's where people do it. You can't really do agriculture where it doesn't work. For example, the Sahara Desert, um, the outback in Australia, the Namib Desert, the Gobi Desert, you're not going to have agriculture in those areas. And so anytime we look at primary activities, it's about where the resource is. And that may be agricultural land, fisheries, mineral resources. All right, now, the other thing that we want to understand about agriculture is that agriculture, and in fact, primary activities, are becoming less and less important in terms of the world's economy. In part, that's because all of these things have relatively low value added. They cost money to do, but what you get out doesn't have a lot of value. And so you'll notice that in terms of Europe, North America, um, and even uh, a significant part of South America and East Asia, these represent a relatively low, less than 10% in many places, uh, in terms of percent of their economy. So while we all rely on food, it is not something that produces a great deal of, of output, if you will, economic output for a given country. All right, so the primary sector is relatively small in terms of its importance. <coughs> the other thing that's begun to happen is that characteristics of this aspect, and I'm going to focus on uh, agriculture as an example of the primary sector, is that what you're going to notice is that over time, what has happened in terms of agriculture is that the number of farms in the United States, industrial farming, if you will, commercial farming, the number of farms has gone down, but the size of the farms has gone up. So in other words, what we have here is in primary activities, there's a consolidation of those activities into fewer and fewer hands. And we can see that, especially in the United States, and in fact, in, in most of the more uh, industrialized states, what you see is that farms are getting bigger. The acreage really isn't changing, but the farm, each individual farm is getting bigger, and there are fewer people doing it. And so if you look at in terms of the American workforce, at this point, less than 3% of the American workforce is in agriculture. It's an extremely small portion of the U.S. labor force. And in fact, that's true throughout the world. When you look at virtually all of the countries that uh, are, if you will, again, in this industrialized sector, you can notice dramatically over time that their populations involved in agriculture keep shrinking. Right? Now, that means that the number of farms, again, is going down, but their size isn't. Size is going up, number of farms is coming down. And you'll notice here, lots of farm decrease in kind of the Midwest and the Southern Midwest, and some moderate increases in the West. And again, that's as higher and higher populations and more valuable uses of land occur. Okay, this is true really across virtually all the primary sectors. Again, if you look at just coal mining as an example, it reached its peak somewhere in the 1910s, 1920s. And then by today, there's, there's really almost no population involved in it. Less than 100,000 people are directly involved in coal mining in the United States. And so again, a significant shift in who does this and how important they are to a country's economy. Okay, uh, we'll come back and start secondary uh, sector activities in our next lecture.